I was born in 1980. My mom was a housewife, and my dad was a firefighter. I was their only son. Naturally, I grew up looking at my father as a hero. Although when I got older, I started understanding more about his work. Knowing that he could not come back at any point, I just ended up respecting the man more. He was very good with woodworks, and he would ask my help to make wooden furniture at the workshop. I was 13 when I said to him that I would like to become a firefighter. I still remember the look on his face when I said it, he was very happy, but at the same time worried. We lived in a mid-sized town, so the job was rough sometimes. From there on, my dad started a physical training routine on me. It started easy, with some exercises. Around two to three years later, I started going to gym. Some other things I still remember on my dad, was the musical taste. He used to listen to a lot of rock, and his favorite song was Smoke on the Water from Deep Purple. It was normal listening to him humming that song around the house. Even on his old Chevy, that was the go-to song every time. From listening to it from a very early age, I got a profound distaste for that song. When I got out from high school, I joined the fire academy. While I was in the middle of training, my dad retired. That was a relief for my mom and me. He had problems on his back, and he was really starting to feel pain. From then on, I started my career as a firefighter. Four cases really marked my career. The first case, it was when I saw my first bloody mess. Me and the others that were in training were taken to a scene of a car crash. We would help in the removal of a body from the crash. I had seen a dead body before, but nothing could prepare me for something like that. A man had slept on the wheel in a highway near the town, and collided with a massive truck that was stopped. The car literally got under the truck, and the cargo container got most of the top part of the car. The car itself wasn't recognizable. I could see blood dripping from that twisted metal thing. As we got closer, one of my friends threw up. I gagged, but keep my posture. The poor man was completely destroyed. His head was crushed by the cargo truck, and with the force of the impact it opened. So most of his brain was visible and scattered all around what was left of the seat. One of his eyes was hanging from what was left of his face. They had brought us there to see the thing with our own eyes. Then they made us stay on the side of the road diverting the traffic while they worked on the body removal. The day I arrived home, visibly shaken. My mom and dad observed me as I got home, and slowly walked into my room. As I got into my room I sat at my bed. Someone knocks at the door. My dad. I tell him to come in, and he closes the door behind him. He sits at a chair. And calmly asks me, what had I seen? I described it the best I could. Dad then starts telling some of his stories, of working over 30 years as a firefighter mostly of bodies in various states and or stages of decomposition. Some horrified me, but he would tell them in a calm and stable way. I finally asked him, if there was a way of not getting shocked over that. He looked at me and said, you never get used to it. He then kept looking at me. At the time I didn't figured it out, but on a later date I would find out that he was making sure if that was what I wanted. He finally stood up and left. The second one, was of a bushfire in the outskirts of the city. In the months of June and July, almost the entirety of the vegetation dries out. That makes it really easy for wildfires to spread and consume large areas really fast. Sometimes the fire is so intense, that we can only delay it for a bit. This means we also have to help evacuate the areas where the fire may hit. And sometimes survey burnt areas in search of bodies. Keep in mind that at this time, I was around three years in the fire department. I was still living with my mom and dad, although now I had a girlfriend and was thinking about moving in with her. So, in that day, a strong wind combined with the dry lands made the fire cover a very large area in a small time. Some of the firemen were at the front evacuating anything that might contain a human being. Another group was fighting the flames trying really hard to at least delay or control the flames. I was with the other group, 
surveying some of the area that was swept by the fire during the night. Everything was burned, and we were in pairs looking around for any signal of life. The land was really smoky, and we had only some yards of visibility. We then spotted a burnt house. It looked like a farmhouse, and it was completely burnt down so there was no roof. My friend and I entered the house ruins, and looked around. There was no sign of anything alive there. Then of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow moving around the corridor of the house. I turned around, and there was nothing there. I quickly yelled, Hello, is someone there? My friend looked at me. We both made it out from the ruins of the house and started looking outside in the smoke. We were not seeing anything, but then, I spotted some movement. My heart skipped a beat when I realized what I was looking at. A man, in a blue shirt and black pants. The problem was, all his clothes were a bit torn, and he was slowly limping in the fog. He had various wounds and burning marks, some of them seemed to have an orange glow to them, almost as if he was still on fire. Various black markings also had that glow. He passed some yards away from us, slowly limping into the fog again. My co-worker and I were horrified by that. I thought about calling the dude, but I knew that it wasn't something natural. When I looked at my friend, he was making a silent sign for me. He then started slowly walking in the direction that the thing went. At this point, I was shitting myself but I followed. We could hear the man slowly walking in front of us, and sometimes we could even see his outline in the smoke. Suddenly, he disappeared behind a tree. My friend and me stopped and stared at each other. We then went to look behind the tree. No signal of a man, but on the ground there was a completely burnt human body. No signals of clothes nor anything. Just the now shrunk body of a human being. Later, I asked my friend what we had seen. He stood there quiet. I also asked for one other member of the team, and he also didn't answer. When I got home, once again my dad went to talk to me. He started by asking what was wrong. I told him everything we had seen that day. He closed his eyes and said, sometimes. People really want to be found. It was then that I got confirmation that what I had seen that day, wasn't from this world. Then he said, don't go speaking about that around, people might start questioning your sanity. The third case happened a few months later. There was this two-story house that caught fire. The department was called and we were there really fast. The thing about being a firefighter is the massive responsibility that is on your shoulders. When people are trapped and hear those sirens, they think that everything is going to be okay. But it isn't going to be okay, the fire truck is only the beginning. That particular day, the lower floor was completely on fire. They said that an old lady was trapped in the upper floor. We moved the platform from the truck to the second floor, and I went in. The flames weren't as aggressive at the second floor, but there was a lot of smoke around. The temperature was high too, so as soon as I got in, I started calling for the old lady. I started looking around, until I spotted a shadow in the smoke. It was at the doorway of a room, it was a dark spot on the smoke, illuminated by the flames. Almost as if, someone was covering himself with a sheet. I called for the lady again, going in the direction of the shadow. As soon as I got around five feet away, the shadow disappeared in thin air. I was startled for a bit, but kept going forward. When I got to the room that the shadow was in the doorway, I looked around. It was a bedroom, and the old lady was passed out on her bed, surrounded by flames. I got her, and got her out. The woman was very lucky to be alive. When I got home, my mom and dad were waiting on me. They were very happy, they knew about the fire and about what I did. One of my dad's colleagues had called them to tell. So that night, we sat and had dinner. Later, I told my dad about what I had seen. He stared at me for a moment, then said, well, you got there first, I mean, before him I asked what he was talking about. He then said that many people on the fire department see that thing. They don't know what it is, but people see it in situations where people are almost dying. It's like a smoke mass. 
said my dad, and I confirmed. The fourth case happened way later. At that point, a few years had passed, and I had moved out with my now wife. I had a son now, and I was happier than ever. That was until winter of 2008. My dad had a heart attack and passed away. He wasn't that old, but since he retired he had gotten a lot fatter. Despite that, it was a shock for my mom and me. At any rate, life went on. The next year, I was working like I never did before. Days would go by fast, and I had a family to provide for. That made me more cautious. So, there was this big recycling plant next to the city. It was deactivated, so homeless people would live there from time to time. That day, we got a call telling that it was on fire, and there were many people inside. All the trash that the plant deactivation left behind was like a hellish fuel for the flames. We went there, with three fire trucks. When we got there, there were many people outside. The flames were high, and we could hear things breaking inside. They said that there was a four-year-old kid trapped in the third floor of one of the sectors. As we got closer, we could see that because of the electrical wires, we couldn't approach with the platform. The only way in was through the second floor, in a place where the platform could barely reach. I got in, and I could hear my co-workers blasting water at the structure from the outside. Normally someone would go with me, but there was fire in the other areas of the compound so everyone had their hands full. Everything was full of smoke, and there was a lot of fire. I ran to the nearest staircase that I could find, and quickly made it to the third floor. As I got there, I started yelling for the kid to find him. Then I heard a scream coming from one of the rooms. I quickly made my way to that room. It was a room made out of wooden prefabs, and they were all on fire. As soon as I got to the room I saw a kid, crying sitting at the corner of the room. I went to the boy, and rolled the anti-flame sheet around him. I then put him on my shoulders and started running. I went to the stairs, but they had just collapsed. The flames were now really getting strong. And for the first time I thought to myself, I might fucking die here if I don't get out. I started looking around to see if I could find anything. The fire and the smoke made it hard to see anything. After looking, I found what appeared to be a window. I then got the radio and warned the crew that I would have to jump off. It was a big metallic window, the type that slides to the side to open. I told them the description of the window, and the overall direction I was. They started preparing the air mattress under two of the windows, since they couldn't know in which one I was. Then I started forcing the window for opening. The heat made the metal expand and the window wouldn't open. I could feel the heat rising up, and I sat the kid on the floor so I could put more effort. No matter how I pushed, the window wouldn't open at all. The kid started screaming when a large piece of wood near us fell down. Now the heat was unbearable, and the kid was screaming. I took out my jacket uniform and rolled around the kid. When I went back to the window, I wasn't feeling pain nor heat anymore. All I was doing was trying to open the damn window. I started feeling a bit lightheaded. I closed my eyes. The first thing that comes to my mind is a humming of a song. Smoke in the water. I opened my eyes. One last push. With a loud clang, the window opens. I take the kid as fast as I can and climb the window. As I look down, I see through the smoke in the flames a big yellow target. I jumped turning my back to the ground and making the kid fall on top of me. We landed safely on the mattress. As we landed, other firemen took the kid, and I was taken to the hospital. I got over 50% of my body burnt. One thing I will never forget, is when I finally got to the hospital. To remove the dead and burnt skin, they would use water and sponges for scraping. Even though they had me under painkillers I would scream and scream wishing I was dead. I would pass out sometimes, and the whole time, I could hear that humming. The voice of my dad humming smoke on the water. I believe he spent the whole deal by my side, cheering for me. I finally got back to work after a long time, but I'm in management and inspection now.